Welcome to The Wedding Edit, a wedding planning podcast for the modern couple. We are your hosts, Kelly and Dana. Except for today, we don't have Kelly (laughs) because Kelly is busy. (laughs) So today it is myself and Doug and our guests. Hi. Hi. Hello. (laughs) Hi. Oh, yeah. That was perfect timing, wasn't it? (laughs) So we're doing things ultra casually today. I haven't even introduced you guys. So you're just like voices now. We're just two cans. (laughs) It's all good. So today we have... Wade Gardner from Movement Productions. Welcome. Hello, hello. And we have Ross Guerin from what Ross Guerin Videography. That's me. Hello. Welcome. Hi, Wade. <laughs> G'day, Ross. <laughs> so good to have you both here. So good to be here. Perfect. Well, thanks it's- for joining us. Thank you for having us. <laughs> thanks for the invite. <laughs> what a special honour. Hey, that's been good. Yeah. And we got beers, so. We have beers. This is yeah. really good. Good start to the day. <laughs> <laughs> it's so- only 9am, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, no, no, just so everybody knows. <laughs> I'm so glad it's not because D right now, my wife would be killing me right now. <laughs> so today we're talking all about videography, just so you know. Uh, so Wade and Ross are both videographers. Well, a little bit of um, information about the two of you. So Wade, I know that you have a one wheel and you've done lots of tricks with that with your video before as well, mm-hmm. that's correct, yes. Yeah. Little sneaky talent you've got there. Yeah, I guess that uh, – I wouldn't say many tricks I've done with it because I, I do – I come from the sporting kind of that surfing, skating background. Yeah. So as soon as I spotted the one wheel, I just wanted to ride it. Yeah. But then it was actually like – I was like, hang on, I could work that into like filming, like standing on, getting a gimbal, tracking shots. And I armed and hard for so long and then it was actually my wife was like, we'll just ride it off as tax. So – I hope my yeah, tax department's not listening, but I was like, oh, sweet. I just think I bought it within like 15 minutes after that comment. And yeah, it's been really, uh, really fun. I don't use it for many weddings, but when there's like cars or bikes or a cool tracking shot, time yeah. lapse, then yeah, it's in the car. Yeah, no, that's cool. And something really amazing about you too, Wade, is that you like the US version of The Office, which is such a good thing about you. Mm. Unfortunately, I can't say the same about Ross. No. Ross really- has a bit more, <laughs> bit more taste. Oh, a bit more. <laughs> it was really hard for me when I first met Ross. Like, I was like, there's like nothing wrong with this guy <laughs> as in like he's got no flaws but that recently How changed that that's changed now it is a flaw I can't believe you had an office where would you be where would you be <laughs> no, no this is true yeah. but yeah. the office You're us welcome. absolutely beats the office like uk no. 100% no no i mean yeah. which season do you want to talk about there's too many, isn't there? There is too many. Too many. <laughs> this is where it's up and down. This is where we've quality. had this argument many times. <laughs> this is where it becomes another podcast. This is also where it? Doug just cuts out 40 minutes yeah. of us talking about the office <laughs> and then it comes back to the wedding edit. So yeah. like, no, he'll edit it until the, it's just me going like, yes, just the have... US office is the best office. <laughs> Cut some my words together. Done. Well, you've just said it anyway. Peter, yeah. But just you... as a robot. Yeah. <laughs> The other thing too that I found that is a flaw of yours, Ross, is mm. that you don't eat pizza crusts. <laughs> this is not true. This is not true. This is absolutely you not true. You know what? Your <laughs> your explanation for this was ridiculous. No, so it makes your- sense. Can I? Can I? <laughs> okay. You speak- May I? Yes. We're out. We had pizza. Um, and would you agree that it was a lot of pizza? Yes. Doug, there, it, it was, was a lot. It was a big pizza. Yeah. It's yeah. a big pizza. Yeah. Now, if I, I couldn't eat all the pizza, so if I'm to discard some point of the pizza, what point would it be? The crust, of course, because I've already had that delicious bread throughout the pizza, <laughs> but with topping on it. <laughs> oh, man. Well, we'll have to ask our audience yeah. if that's a flaw or not. <laughs> but, but it's not true. I love crust. <clears throat> crust, mm-hmm. if you're listening, I love you. Okay. All right. Well, let's put this baby to bed then. Yes. And find out, like, truly... If yes. either of you are flawed. So, pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Yes. <gasps> it's a big no. It's a big yeah, no for me. Yeah, it's a big no. It's, it's an it's obvious silly. no, Ross. No, it's See, just become a thing. It's, it's not become a, a thing. Floor, Everyone just wants to pick on it like, oh, yeah, pineapple. <laughs> it's been on pizza for ages. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the internet <laughs> decided, oh, it's a thing. It's not. You, I bet you have had it before. You've never had an issue. All of a sudden, in the last three years, you've gone, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, it's so against. Like, no, it's not. 
In Italy, they put everything on pizza. Have you been to Italy? No, I haven't. Man. <laughs> Must be nice, Ross. It's like must be nice. Broccoli on pizza. <laughs> Someone's getting bookings, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Delicious. Uh, yeah. No, uh, uh, that's hilarious. He can afford to throw crust away and just yeah. add anything to his pizza he wants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got to say, meanwhile, all that kind of are like just just getting basic toppings and happy with cheese. So yeah, yeah perfect. <laughs> a basic topping is pineapple. Yeah, the most basic you can get. Well, other than margarita, is like a ham and pineapple. Ham and pineapple. It's basic. You put pineapple on a burger. This is where it's wet. Yeah, absolutely. If you go okay. to Porto, like it depends on the burger. Is it too late? Is it too late to walk out, or is this pretty much where I'm here? <laughs> I'm, I'm walking out. <laughs> I'm feeling attacked. <laughs> we just no, like you're lost, good. I guess. The traditional Australian burger, I think, has to have pineapple. Yes, and beetroot. I'm not saying it's Ham? the best thing to have because there's plenty of better burgers, but it is like I think traditional. Yeah, fish and chip shop hamburger. I agree. Egg, pineapple, yeah. beetroot. Yeah. Yes. I don't think I've ever had a hamburger with the lot from like a Aussie um, fish and chip shop that has had pineapple on it. Yeah, there is a few that take it out. Yeah. I've had egg. Look, I'm not I'm not advocating for the pineapple ah. on, the, on the burger, but <laughs> it sounds like on a, on a on a specific pizza. Yeah, sure. Why not? I don't put it on a supreme. Don't put it on like, you know, I don't know, something more fancy. But like if it's there on a ham and pineapple pizza, of course. Sure. I love over 10 love minutes it. probably in this podcast <laughs> and anyone that wants any like valuable like, for, like well, videography we're like, I just want to go and get some pizza and burger right now and maybe I'll listen to this later <laughs> on. Like we should have ordered some pizza yeah. and just had it right here. Yeah. Again, yeah, this is a whole beers, other podcast so. about yeah. pizza. Mm, well, getting to videography then, can you both tell me a bit about what you do? Ross, you can go first. Yeah, I film weddings. Um, so I – like to tell the couples that I'm filming for that I want to reflect them and how their day is. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, my style of wedding videography is more documentary-ish, um, more raw, trying to be a bit more real and, and yeah, trying to, to really showcase the couple and what they're about. That's my spiel. What's yours? I film people kissing. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> A lot of people kissing, and then I put some music and so make I mean, a story. Are you in the out wedding industry? Or? Yeah, no, <laughs> they've got clothes on. Yeah, no, no, they the do. The nicest clothes Most I'll the ever time, wear. Yeah. Not yeah. in the mornings, though. Don't. That's really similar to like, um, yeah. Well, I guess what Ross says, is like, w- what we do is we just document someone's like one of their best days of their life. Yeah, and we capture every single little moment, and it's not staged. It's just following them, hanging out with them, bringing some music, and just like. I don't know. You're probably the same. Is there's not many weddings where you're not like running around having a ball. Like really, yeah. like every single one, you're you're there with them. Yeah. You're laughing, making stupid dad jokes that everyone laughs at. But yeah. it's a good good fun. That's what I see it as. Like, I just see it as like filming and <laughs> capturing moments for sure. <laughs> not mine. Oh, nobody <laughs> laughs at your dad jokes? jokes. Everyone laughs at. No, dad jokes are meant to be not laughed at, right? Yeah, mine might come across because they're good jokes, but yeah, come dad, no. they're just dad jokes. No, so. I find the dad mm-hmm. the bad ones. Yeah, they're the best ones. So let's talk about what styles of videography are available to couples today. And this might not be in particular styles that you guys offer, but just in general. To tell the truth, I don't watch a whole lot of other wedding films. Mm-hmm. There is a certain, like, like I do actually do, not giving Ross a, like, heads up, but I, like, I do watch Ross's films. I, like, I love his style. There's yeah. a few Australian, like, videographers and filmmakers that I watch. And I think the style, there's, there's the American style of filmmaking which is really generic. Like, you know, it, they just have this broad kind of really slow start. Here's some kind of like drone shots. We're going to build it. Here's some, like they might have detail shots for like 10, 20 seconds. I'm just like, mm-hmm. just show the couple. Let's get right into it. Let's like, let's give a little teaser of what this couple are about. Mm-hmm. And that's the style of like films you see a lot and that it's generated over to Australia. And I see a lot of people not, yeah, you know, that's a lot of inspiration they've taken from it. But you've got the other style where it's just like kick you, kick you right in the crutch grab you and then just hold you on. And I love that style. So like your humdrung, your uh, bottle brush films kind of yep. style. And you've, you've, that's – they've probably influenced a lot of people now, like for sure. Like yeah. I take a lot of inf- influence from them but also from what Humdrum did and a few other – like there's American filmmakers but I really watch their films for like their cinematic kind of stuff. Like, you know, mm-hmm. their storytelling's good but it's not as good as like, you know, say what grace and energy can put down on paper and you see what comes out of that. You're like, that's filmmaking. So I guess that style is something that I really, really love. Um, and there's just a whole other bunch of styles, but they're the ones I'd, I'd be more focused on. Yeah, there is, there's a, a variety of 
styles, isn't there? Mm. Like there's I'm so there's with, like documentary. Yeah, mm. but even even in the like the highlight reels, so the yeah. the kind of creative ones that you create for social media or just yeah. these shorter videos for people. There's a variety, and I don't know. There's like there's the ones that are very music based. There's ones that are very story driven. There's mm-hmm. ones that are very uh, I don't know, like yeah, upbeat, fun. There's ones that are more emotive. Yeah. And yeah, some videographers will will cater more towards one. Some will swing either way. Um, but yeah, there's a huge variety. Mm. Yeah. So for anyone that's looking, I just like look, right? Like, yeah. like look, actually watch wedding videos. Yeah. I think some people still have the idea of wedding video is like this hour and a half long bore fest. Yeah. That you're gonna watch like every anniversary. You sit down and you're like, oh, let's put it on, and no one else wants to see it. They're like, ugh, I don't watch their wedding video again. <laughs> but these days, it's like. Some really good ones, like yeah. really good ones that you can watch again and again and be like, that's amazing. Like and it feels real. It doesn't feel boring. It doesn't feel staged. Yeah, I think style, <laughs> style also depends on uh, the couple in the wedding for sure. Mm-hmm. So like I won't have a certain style of filmmaking. Like I'd love just to create and Ross is exactly the same. So I've, if, if you're like your couple are more, you know, focused on family, if it's, you know, that'll change the style of the film straight away. Like if it's more of a love romantic backstory, then go that way. Or if they're just like sculling champagne and just like ripping the dance floor apart, then that's the style of film. But you just combine all style, all styles into one film. And mm-hmm. I think that's probably, that's where I'm that most happiest when creating films mm-hmm. is where my last film will be nothing like my next one. Yeah. So lots of videographers have different styles of the way that they work and produce work um, and like the final production can you tell me a bit about why it's really important for couples to choose a visual team that has a very similar style um i mean off the top of my head working with someone too saying like the videographer and photographer so a team together yeah yeah so it definitely helps having a photographer and a videographer who are can kind of work in unison with the same style we were only just saying before about for us personally we like a photographer who who has a bit of movement yeah. Who has a bit of uh, yeah motion in the way they capture things, not as staged or not as I don't know what the word is, but posed. Yeah, yeah, posed, not as posed. So, yeah. I mean, for me, that works for me. So I, I like to get not necessarily the bit that they're getting from the photo, but the before and after, the little offcuts of what they're doing. They're my favorite kind of bits because for me, they're the most real and authentic part of the couple. Um, but in saying that, like I've got some gigs coming up that are with photographers who I thought wouldn't match my style. Mm. And after thinking about it, you know, and kind of being like, oh, dreading it, like, oh, no, because they don't match it. In reality, like I, I understand why a couple might choose two different types yeah. because maybe they think, well, photos will get this for me yeah. and then video will achieve this for me. It might be harder for me and maybe for the pho- photographer too to get that end result, but I understand why they might choose two different. Yeah. So maybe it's intentional. But obviously, yeah, to make it easier or more. Mm-hmm. Gelled. Yeah, like, what's so that they- word? You know, this thing. <laughs> like, like a unison. Like if you if you want the photos and videos to kind of be that similar style, then yeah. sure. Yeah. But like, may, maybe there's someone out there that likes the yeah. idea of having like photos is for this. And video is for this. Yeah. So I get oh, that. yeah, absolutely. So if if a couple like wanted a, like a video that was more party, I guess, yeah. they'd choose somebody that was a bit more high energy. But yeah. if they're wanting those really like um, editorial yes. kind of type photos, then they're going to choose an editorial photographer, yeah. Yeah. that kind of a thing. Um, so, yeah, couples definitely might intentionally do that. Yeah. I think a lot of couples probably wouldn't go that way. but No. It's more so like the really creative ones that probably would go down that path. Yes. But then, yeah, I suppose like if you're wanting that really like whimsical kind of dreamy or relaxed kind of style, then you want to have a photographer or a videographer that is relaxed and has that style yeah. as well. Yeah, I think it's like it's not a, like the biggest criteria that, that both styles match, but it would definitely help the couples when it comes to they know what style they're looking for. Yeah. They would find it. And it's just a huge advantage. Like sometimes like when I do final catch-ups with couples, if I know the photographer that I'm working with Mm -hmm. and I've worked with them like a few times, I just suggest straight away, let's all catch up. Yeah. So straight away it becomes this table of dinner, drinks, wine, and we're all talking about the wedding. We're all on the same page. Yeah. We're all just like like so frothing and so excited to get to your wedding Yeah. where 
another photographer you might not have worked with, you'll still reach out to them and say, hey, I'm working with you this weekend. I'll always, I'll always check out their work and say like what, like just have a look to see what style they are shooting, which then would kind of like I would change a little bit on my equipment. So say if I quickly stalked a photographer and I knew they shot on a lot of like 7,200 mil lenses, then I would just make sure that, you know, I've got a longer lens yeah. on my gimbal or my camera just so we're not kind of like, like, and it's always just like communication without a doubt. Yeah. Like it's just chatting. So your styles could be different, but you, as long as you just keep that line of communication open with the other photographer, yeah. then you can just say, hey, what do you need? This is what I need. Let's just do it together and get what we need. Yeah. That's very considerate. Oh, sorry. I was just going to cut in there because you said about the 70 to 200 mil lens. For those that might might not know, that means a photographer is going to be working quite a distance away from the couple. Yep. And then therefore you can't be sort of right up next to them. Yeah. Is that what you're – yeah, out, so yeah. like I, there's a few that do that, which is fine. So you you sit back it just make sure like because I always shoot with two cameras on me. So that way I always got one. So I know when he's when the photographer's got long lens on, I can still get that same stuff. But then I might move in a little bit closer with yeah. a shorter lens just to get a bit more, you know, a little bit intimate kind of stuff mm. out of the couple. Yeah. But it's just nice to know that going into the day. Yeah. Because then that way you're just like, oh, sweet, like I'm prepared for how you shoot. That's where, good. I think that's um like – kind of generous of you some people would just want to do what they want to do and, and they would just try and find a way of stepping right in and being there and just be like photographer can deal with it but that's sort yeah, of not I, the way you want to end of the day it's like the couple are gonna you want the couple to get the best shots of it yeah. of everything not just photos and videos but everyone yeah. just gelling together and if you can just make a small couple of sacrifices in your end which isn't a huge deal like it's just changing one lens for me yeah then then i'm not we're not going to be like butting heads and that for end of the day that's just good for everyone but when I'm working with someone that I've worked with three or four times and we catch up for beers and stuff, I, yeah, it makes a hell of a difference. Like yeah. it really yeah. does. Like yeah. I love those weddings. Yeah. I do think the main thing you said there is communication. Yeah. Like the communication 100%. between – I think that's what's changed in the industry heaps. Like yeah. so a while ago it was like photographer did their thing, photographer yeah. did their thing and you, you didn't know, you didn't mm. care who mm. the other person was. You'd rock up, you'd do your job, they do your job and maybe you're competing. Whereas now I like – I mean I have couples – say to me like you know i don't have a photographer yet who do you recommend yeah and of course you know first thing you say is well have a look through some work and you'll you mm. send examples and they can look through their work but then also i'm always just saying who i'm recommending not only has amazing work but they're amazing people on the day that yeah. for me is the most important thing yeah for them obviously make sure the work is good yeah but if on the day they're easy to work with they're having fun and i know that we're gonna all get along your day is done. Mm. Like it's so yeah. much better for photographer. It's better for videographer. Like that's the the main thing of us capturing anything is yeah. the couple having a good time. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So videographer, photographer working together toward the same goal, getting what's important to the couple yeah. Um, and, yeah, working together well and having fun, I guess, as oh, well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because it sucks when you work with somebody that you don't really get along with or if you feel like – you're kind of working in competition with somebody as well. Um, so you want to ha have that where you're both on the same team, you're trying to get the same result, you know, you can work together to get that and that's going to produce something way better for the couple than if you were kind of mismatched, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. yeah. You're both working for the couple. So yeah. it's, a, it's a collaborative thing. Yeah. Like that's what's cool. That's what's so nice about this yeah. job is working with different photographers every weekend and having to work together and realising like, it's not for me. It's not for you. It's yeah. for the couple. Yeah. So like we got to find a way to get this working and it's, yeah. I don't know, that's what makes it so good. So we've talked about highlight films, social media films, which might be like one to two minutes, highlight films around like what, the 15 minute mark or less, 10, 15 minutes, that kind of a thing. Uh, I know that it varies, but then we've also talked about documentary length films as well. So that might be a bit longer. So I'd love for you both to tell me about your packages and what they include, what what um, couples can get as well, as well as what you offer. Um, yeah, I've got four packages. So like the tailed end of it, like an elopement. So if anyone couple just want to just like sneak away, just real cheeky, like maybe three to four hours. So we just kind of do like, you know, the elopement and then we just go and do a photo shoot. And it's really cool around those times because you can just pick where you want. You can pick what time it is. So they're super chill yeah. and relaxed. And I love doing elopements because it's just – it's about more about the couple just being themselves and taking all that stress away. Um, and then the other three packages just all vary from what you get with 
highlight film and then the next one up will be highlight film and then also a sneak peek film. And then the top package will include like, you know, pretty much all day up until 12 a.m., um, all the bells and whistles, you get the documentary film, you get the highlight film. So it all depends on the couples. But a lot of the couples can add on stuff as well. So it's not like mm-hmm. you're not limiting yourself. So it's like a yeah. la carte kind of menu as well. So you're like – I have some couples that get the documentary film like a year down the track yeah. and they're open to that. And it's a kind of like a little nice little way for couples around their one-year anniversary. It's like we've watched their highlight film. We've watched the, the full speeches. We've watched the full ceremony one year anniversary comes around, hey, let's let's get the documentary film, which is pretty much all their raw footage, but just cut and put in a nice way that's watchable instead yeah. of me just like, you know, leaving the camera on filming a tree for five minutes, yeah. um, which is what raw footage is. So it's nice to get a documentary, which is just, it's, it's raw footage, but in a nice way. But so it's nice yeah. to have those three packages for different or four packages mm-hmm. for different people that want different things, I guess. So when you say raw footage, you do mean that that's like obviously converted so that they can watch it. Yeah. So yeah. I will use nearly every clip that was every clip that was filmed from my camera. Yeah. They'll get that, but I'll just I'll just trim it so it just takes off. Yeah. And and then that's just cut to music and they can, which is a nice thing to get for your one year anniversary. Yeah. But some couples get that on the top package straight away if that's if they know that's what they want, they've got a choice. But I don't really limit things. I can always customize as well. So because some couples are. Like every, some people, everyone's different. I always find so everyone has different out like, like what they feel is more important for the day. Mm-hmm. But I'll always majority all my weddings will be all day, so at least yeah. ten to twelve hours. It's just pretty a standard wedding for me. Yeah. So with your add-ons you were talking about before, would they be something like speeches or the full ceremony, first dance or vows? Uh, I include all that stuff in my mm-hmm. package. I know some people are different. Yeah. I just kind of eliminate the confusion of what they're getting and saying yeah. you'll get this. The only add-ons would be like a sneak peek film, okay. which is this little one to two minute kind of film they get two days after the wedding mm-hmm. and a documentary film. They're the, yeah. they're the two big main add-ons and you can add on extra filmers as well. So a second shooter, which I'll bring them on for about six hours. Okay. And what's the benefit of the second shooter? Um, usually the second shooter would benefit from the groom arriving from the ceremony a lot of times we are the brides up until like we try and be there and like to the last like a, a comfortable moment we can leave and get to the ceremony. But if the groom's arriving in a nice car, a helicopter, something really cool they want captured, then I'll get a second shooter to get to the church or the, uh, the gardens or wherever the ceremony is. They capture all that stuff and they usually have them all the way up until about the first dance. So it's, it kind of relieves a lot of pressure on what you need to capture with details as well. Mm-hmm. So I can focus more on the couples during a sunset session, knowing the second shooter is like over there getting all the little cool details, the reception, yeah. where the, the couple kind of look back on and go, wow, the room looked amazing when it was empty. You know, so the, yeah. all those little things. So the second shooter can take a load of stress off the shoulder. Like Ross would probably know that as well. It was like, how much easier is it when you bring a second shooter along for a big wedding? Especially if it's Wade. <laughs> Wait, second shot for me once and yeah. after second shot for him. But oh my God, yeah. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. But yeah. it just, it does depend on the couple, depends on the day, depends on their timeline. It can be pretty. Yeah. Yeah. I would say most couples, I mean, that get me don't need a second shooter. They don't want the second shooter. They don't, you know, Ross is enough. wise, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> Ross is enough. One yeah, Ross no, is enough. You don't, don't want, want any pay, more Rosses. Like, yeah. Yeah. But, but if, um, I mean, for instance, like ever since Wade, second shot for me and we did a, ch- a church wedding. Pretty much now, anytime that I know it's a church wedding, I've, there's a second shooter there because it is, it's a whole other ball game. There's a lot yeah. more rules in a church. There's yeah, a lot there more is. going on. There's a bit more sound. If it's like a Greek or Italian wedding, there's more cameras needed. So, yeah, it's very dependent on the couple and their wedding and their timeline. What are your packages? <laughs> yeah, my packages. Yeah, uh, tell us more about your packages, Ross. Well, yeah, so I've got two two main packages and they really just vary on the end edit time. So, I think the first one is a four to six minute edit. And the second is a eight to 10 minute style edit. So yeah, within four to six minutes, I kind of tell the story of the day, tell a lot about the couple, um, very story driven using speeches and the ceremony. Um, and then the eight to 10 minute is probably a bit more expanded. Um, yeah. Getting to know a bit more about the bridal party or the venue or yeah, you can get a bit more story in there. So that's kind of the two. And then the only additional add-on I have is the full day edit. It's like the documentary edit, which is mm-hmm. similar to the way I try to use everything that I've got to kind of chronologically tell the order of the day. Mm. So our highlight films, I know yours especially is, is mine. Yeah, we don't necessarily start 
like here's the groom getting ready, here's the bride getting ready, here's yeah. the ceremony. It doesn't work that way. So we kind of tell the story, uh, I don't know, creatively. Yeah, that's a cool thing about the difference between a highlight film and a documentary film is like highlight film is us um, telling the story the best way we can and how we vi- visualize it and the most creative way as well. Where the documentary film is really good for couples because it's just in the chronicle order of yeah. how events happened as well. So it's a lot more easy. And it's I think the, the more of the parents and stuff really appreciate the documentary films because, as you said before, a lot of families are used to that hour and a half kind of sit down, watch the day as it unraveled. Yeah. Where we're kind of doing that but in a way that you don't have to push fast forward. Yeah. yeah. Like no one wants to watch their wedding film and have to push fast forward. And if they are, then – you know, trim it down or do something or do something different. Yeah. Like yeah. I take like I take the speeches and the, the, the full ceremony and the full speeches out of a documentary film and just has them as a separate file. Just or a, a, like a separate video. So you don't have to like, you know, watch the ceremony for the fifth time just to watch your film. Yeah. So tell me a bit about how much couples should be budgeting for their videography for their weddings. Just video, like if I was like a couple, you'd have to be thinking around the five thousand dollar mark and up. It's just like you don't – and that would get your whole day covered. You know, all yeah. those little things. You don't want to get little surprises and stuff as well. And it's that old saying is you pay, like you get what you pay for and stuff as well. But like I find if couples just like find work they love, there's a reason they're loving that work because that person has spent so many years and hours behind a computer, behind a camera, developing their craft to get to that point that it looks that good that they're falling in love with it for a reason. So – there's a value you can put on it and I wouldn't I would say five and above is what couples would be looking for for video. Everyone's different. Ross yeah. was yeah, similar or yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. What Absolutely. um what would you say for elopements? Uh it'd be about half of that. So cuz elopement for me they're so stress-free. Like mm-hmm. Ross would agree is like for doing video some of those stressless moments for us are like we have awesome jobs but getting from A to B when things are out of your control can sometimes really put that little, you know, a few extra gray hairs on your head as well. It's just, yeah. you know, it could be traffic, a church, you know, all those little yeah. things like the dress isn't ready, the first look with dad, all these things that throw a spanner in the works and then creates this stress where elopements are just, let's just get there, get married. Yeah, there's a lot less logistics, I guess. Um, yeah. It's kind of like the ceremony's the thing and then everything else is kind of art, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's creative. It's 100% like yeah. we're getting married and then we're having like this time. Mm. to get portraits of us. I think that's why is, couples have chosen that yeah, as well absolutely. because yeah. it is less stressful. Yeah, uh, it's them. It's purely yeah, about them. exactly. A wedding, a lot of people will be like, yeah, it's my day, but in reality it's not. And I think most couples are aware of that. They're actually yeah. putting on the day for family and friends, which is what I, I love about weddings, right? Yeah. Like it's you are literally creating this party for yourselves but to celebrate you. Yep. Yeah. Um, with the ones that you love most. Yeah. But an elopement is is very much like let's just keep it us. Yeah. Like let's have our moment. So yeah. It's so you can yeah you can definitely cut the cost if you get oh. a, an elopement because yeah. everyone's every, no one's going to like it's a win win for everyone. Yeah. The couples are like you know they're not spending as much. We're kind of and but most elopements aren't weekends as well so that's the best thing it just kind of mixes the week up where we're constant we're like editing. A lot of the time. So if someone's like, hey, I've got like a really like an elopement on a hilltop sunset on a Thursday, boom. Yeah. Yeah. I'm there because it's nice. Yeah. I don't have to beat Ross playing squash. It's perfect. <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> if I show up, that is. Yeah. If yeah. you show up. <laughs> Tell me about how soon couples should book in their videographer. <laughs> Ross, you just got an inquiry. You should answer this one first. What yes. was your inquiry? You I just got, got an inquiry for 2025. My God. Just for That's anyone, not anyone soon listening, enough, it's currently no. 2022. <laughs> But yeah, it, it like it happens, and people want to inquire, and that mm. it makes sense. Me personally, that's too early for me. But um, as soon as you start looking into getting married, I would suggest starting to look at the big five. So yeah, your venue, your celebrant, your photographer, videographer. What's the other one? <laughs> Is there a big five, or did I just make that up? Florist. <laughs> sure. I think you, let's throw I, them in. I don't think you could. You, you couldn't. You couldn't do big four. I already have one Episode wedding for myself. Following flowers. Definitely flowers. Um, yeah. Definitely flowers. I don't know. Are they your big five? Yeah, I would. I would say definitely like a, no less than a year, a, no less than a year out without a doubt. Yeah. Like nothing. Like I hate nothing more was like when I get an inquiry from a really really cool couple that or be telling me something about himself. Yeah, they might be a bridesmaid of a wedding I've already done, and then I just look at that little red dot next to the inquiry. And I just know that I've already booked. Yeah. Um, so 
two, I'm like a year and a half, two years, happens. like just as soon as you get engaged, just like reach out to them yeah. straight away. Yeah, even if you haven't had like your engagement party or if you're like planning on having an engagement party because for us we did that and then we were like let's focus after yeah. that. I think it's good just to book, yeah, the big five first and then. Yeah. Even yeah. if you haven't got the venue booked and like I've had one recently, it was really cool. Yeah. Um, she was like, "This is the like this is the month that we're looking at getting married. What dates do you have available?" Yeah. And then I'll then I'll check with the venue and stuff as oh, well. Oh, that's good. I which is really couples. cool because it's just like, yeah. it, but she knows the value of um, photos and film and stuff as yeah. well because she already kind of doing the same thing with a photographer, mm-hmm. and the venue was flexible. So her big five or you know big four, yeah. big three, whatever. Yeah. Um, was photos and video was off the bat and then after that it was the venue which was really cool so book whenever you can the benefit of doing that as well is that we like we know about weddings we also are a wealth of knowledge with weddings we know other people in the industry so yeah booking a a videographer or photographer as early as you can can help you along the way yeah we can help you understand like where what time like uh, timelines things like that like we all photographers celebrants like we all know about weddings so booking those people in and then Finding what you're after is a is a really good thing, and that's a process we love doing. Yeah, it's happening to that recommendation list that yeah, we can give off for yeah. sure. When you get a couple that are like, "We love your style," what would you recommend about this? You're like, "Oh, this is great." Yeah, like it helps us get more excited about your wedding day because we're like, yeah. "We've kind of been there, we've been doing it with you." So that's exciting. But on the other end, if you're engaged and you don't want to be going down the the stress of planning a wedding and you just want to get hitched within two or three months, then just do it then as well because nothing's even nothing's even better. When you get this late minute call up and Doug's probably the same, you guys are the same Mm -hmm. and it's leading into winter and someone's like, we want to get married next like month. Is that possible? I love those inquiries as well because it's just like, you know what you want. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's too late as well. Like if it's been a, if if it's under a year and you're like, oh, I haven't booked them. I won't bother. Yeah. Just reach out anyway. (laughs) Don't do that. Yeah. Especially over the, yeah. The last few years. Oh, um, (laughs) the last few years has moved people's schedules. Yeah. So, you know, times that previously you'd think would be booked out have opened up. Like these things happen. So yeah. Dates move, things happen. So Mm. still inquire. Yeah. Of course it could be a no, just be prepared that it could be a no. So if you have your heart set on a certain videographer or photographer or a certain style that you like, like inquire straight away. Mm Mm-hmm. Like Ross Gear and Videography. Just What's that? Boom. Just Ross Gear and Videography. Just if you saying, see it, if you see him, just inquire. What did you say? Him. He's just he's just plugging. He's just, he's just plugging he's himself. Rossgearin dot com. Think, think this is going to get cut out. R I N. Doug leave that in. Is gonna be <laughs> Please leave that in, Doug. All right, I have two frequently asked questions for you guys. Yes. That I would love to know about. The first one is: Can couples choose their own music for their videos? Hmm. Um, to put it bluntly, not really, because we we source our f- uh, music from a licensed library. Mm-hmm. So to go down that avenue, if someone said, "Look, I want Ed Sheeran perfect for our music film," like realistically, they could if they really wanted to, but they'd be looking at the sums of like you know forty to sixty thousand dollars to use a song, which is yeah. like you know I don't I haven't even done the math on that, but no. I've heard of people like reaching out and looking getting twenty thousand dollar figures for a song. Wow. But we have a music library which is. Me and Ross both use um, uh, music bed, but I, sometimes I get the genre of the couple. But mm-hmm. Ross is the same as me, and I'm like a lot of other filmmakers are. We never know what music we're going to be using until we capture the day. And Doug's probably the same as well. It's like a couple might have in mind that they've got this lovey dovey, real soft song for their wedding film, and their wedding film, their wedding day was nothing but a party champagne being sprayed you know dad doing the worm with his shirt off or you know like some really cool (laughs) things but like that really like lovey mushy moment might never have happened in the day so that music they had in their mind won't never fit their story so i think the way that how i kind of pick music is i'll go through all the audio throughout a day i'll pull out every single audio bit that's relevant to them their story their, their day and then i create their film from the audio and then I try and match the audio to that and then the visuals come at the end. And so that's I said, if couples want to pick a song, it's hard. They can have a genre and then we can work around that. Yeah. But to put it bluntly, yeah, no one you can't really pick a song for a wedding yeah. film unless you want like, you know, a license, you know, someone yeah. knocking on your door. Just you know, you don't want that. <laughs> well, Facebook will take your video down as well. That's true. Um, oh, yeah. and Instagram if you're using apart from now, obviously reels. there's the reels feature. So yeah, you can yeah. like do shorter ones, um, mm-hmm. obviously. Mm. Yeah, I always think music is such an important part of the video. Yeah. That obviously people 
want to have their say on it and I, yeah. and I get that. But I think, I mean, for me creatively making that person's film, you know what works and what doesn't work. And you, like I, yeah, I listen to what song they use coming down the aisle. I listen to what song do they do their first dance to? What are they listening to in the morning when they're getting ready? Even what are they wearing? What's their venue like? Like those things give you a hint as to what kind of music that would suit and that, of course, they like. And then when you're creating the film, like yours and mine are the same, but we're very story-driven, you're not throwing like some orchestral low thing on such an upbeat, funny moment. So... I mean, we use multiple songs and mm. we, and it's not just as easy as find a song, slap, bang, chuck stuff on top. Like Wade and I, we've talked about this before, but we will go into a song and then cut it. Maybe the first part isn't the best part of the song. Maybe the middle bit is. So we recut music mm -hmm. specifically for your wedding film. So it's mm -hmm. not, yeah, it's not easy to just go, oh, we'll, we'll find yeah. whatever. We spend a lot of time looking of music I've, that's going to work with that video. Yeah, and I've, I've, I've never had a couple come never. back and ask for a change of music. Never. Yeah, ever. And never. I don't know how many films I've um, done now. Like there's a big process to it. And there's a process I do as well as like a day after a wedding and I, I take the dog for a walk around the oval and I chuck headphones on and I listen to music bed and I just skip through just random songs. And as soon as I feel a song that had the same feel of the night before at the wedding, I just mark it as a favourite. So when it comes around to editing their wedding, I've already got a stack of like nine or ten songs because – you get a feel from a wedding, from being there. You might have heard a song that everyone went nuts on the dance floor to and it wasn't Nutbush. Please, it was not Nutbush. Mm -hmm. I bet it was. No, no it wasn't. Um, <laughs> my dog probably Nutbush hates me because I'm off. just like constantly doing laps around the oval trying to find songs. But you get a feel what music could really like benefit a wedding film and being a creative and doing what we do, we think we, I take a lot of pride in picking music and Ross does the same. We spend a lot of hours like flicking through music to try and make it match. I think if you rock up to a tattoo artist and go, I've drawn this, put it on my body, they're going to be like, where's my creative input in this? You yeah. know what I mean? So it's kind of like yeah. trusting the creative person that they're going to find the right thing for you. Yeah. Mm. But I have other couples that are like more country kind of orientated yeah. or like there's a genre of music and I'm, I'm completely open with that Yeah, because they might, so it's then I can jump, at least that narrows the field of what music I'm looking for. Um, and it's really cool. Like music is like when you can pull down music and find lyrics of songs, that's really cool as well. And not a lot of people would notice. And Ross does the same thing. Some of the filmmakers do the same thing. Is like there's an audio bit in a in a film where it could be talking about their backstory or holding hand. Insert a song and the chorus comes in and it says about holding hands. You know, so we'll go down the world of trying to match the lyrics to what the couples are talking about in their films and in their day. Not people would really notice, but it's nice to know that you can go to that extent. Yeah. So if someone says, look, I want Ed Sheeran, it's like it doesn't fit. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Doug did that once with um, there was like a whoosh. Once. Yes. In, oh, in, um, it's dangerous. Yeah, you in, can <laughs> you can become quite corny. If yeah. You're, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you're not the, careful the, with the it. The girl's but. hair just went like it looked like it had like whipped in A little whip in the, whip wind. In the wind. Yeah, yeah it was so That's funny. Cool. And then, yeah, the whip in the song. I've done like subtle. But you added the sound effect or it was in the song? That was in the song. I'm about yeah. to say, if you, yeah, if you're nah, a sound designer, yeah, that's whips. pushing it. Mate, <laughs> no. I've, I've <laughs> done my own voice to do like yeah. little – if I've been like I know I specifically want – this kind of sound and I can't find it. Yeah. I've recorded my own voice and then like. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. It's like crazy what you can do. over the top so you'd never know it was my voice. But it, and it makes a huge difference. I was You're watching like, a, oh. a documentary of uh, Skywalker Studios. Yes. And just watching them like just figure out Foley to do and they're literally just watching the film and jumping up and down on something or, yeah. or bashing something or just matching something that is totally different. Yeah. But it's, I think it's those, like what you were saying before, Wade. It's a, you kind of hope they don't notice it. Yeah. But it's the subconscious of yeah. the connection of them singing about holding hands. You're putting towards together the visual. It really hooks you in where yeah. just that shot of them holding hands, you kind of can drift away and, and, yeah. and just be lost from the film. It's, not, yeah. Not it's there. a time consuming process. Yeah. I love sound design. Um, just my, one of my last, my latest films so that the, um, uh, the Halloween one, yeah, yeah, pumpkin. So I did. I put a little bit of Tim Burton in there, like, and anyway, so Corpse Bride. But I needed the sound design. There's a shot with the butterflies are flying off, and uh, one of my mates was like, "There's some incredible butterfly sounds." I was like, oh, "That's that's bats slowed down at twenty five percent." And he was like, "Wow!" So it's really cool when you can yeah, like cool. when you can play on sounds, yeah. and, as you said, insert them, and they just they increase the value of that that the film and the story 
telling just a little bit more. Like yeah. it's it's just real subtle stuff, like opening up an envelope. You know, there's some there's some lots of foley sounds out there for that. Um, you can record them live, but sometimes they don't really work out that well. Like it's, it's yeah. not as crisp as you wanted it to. So you just insert those sounds. No one knows. Well, everyone knows now, but no <laughs> one. Um, but it just it it creates a story. They won't away. notice. Yeah, I've heard someone say. I think it was the same documentary. The house sound sort of just sneaks in the side door of your ear. Mm. You sort of notice everything that's happening through your eyes, and sound just kind of comes and gets you by surprise. Yeah, yeah. that emotional hook as well. I think that's the same, like the whole process of creating the wedding video takes a long time. Like it can take a long time Yeah. and the sound design and finding music is part of that, but also coloring like photographers would understand, but you know, finding what style matches with them. Like you, for that Halloween one, I know you spent a lot of time coloring it to match like the Tim Burton film. So mm. that the, when you're cutting between, it's just, it gels, like it works. I've had one that were the couple, the ones that I shot with you. Um, Taylor yeah. and Steph, like they loved Taylor Swift. So I yeah. went and found like the recent Taylor Swift films or the video clips from, you know, her latest album at the time, which was like Willow or something. So it was a bit more of like a green tinge. So, you know, I'd get that on my computer and like try to subtly do that. And I don't know if they yeah. ever knew. I don't be like, oh, I went and <laughs> did this for you. But I think it's just a nice little thing that we do that when couples watch it, there's a sense of familiarity and there's a sense of like, I like this because it's something, yeah, that I like elsewhere. Yeah, that's yeah cool. so I guess in short, don't don't pick your own songs. We got you covered. Yeah, yeah. It's like don't pick your own. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> coloring. Don't, and... don't pick your songs. We we know what's going on. Yeah. Well, we hope we hope we can pick the songs. We understand for you. you better yeah. than you understand yourselves. Mm. So talk to me about delivery times. Like, how long does it take, or how long can couples expect to wait for their films, and what goes into the process of like why it takes so long? Um, depending you just, on you said right there, it takes so long. Yeah. It? Yeah. Does it? It does. <laughs> it certainly does. I'm yeah. married to a videographer. So. Yeah. yeah, it does. Uh, depending on what package, like if the couples with me, they choose this little sneak peek, um, they'll get that within like, you know, two two to three days after their wedding, which is really cool. It's a little post-wedding yeah. high. Everyone's like vibing from the from the wedding. They're bouncing yeah. around. Holy crap, there's a video out. Um, for the main films, about four to six months with me. It's not because they don't take four to six months. It's just a backlog of just like films constantly working through. Like if I had zero weddings from the year before and I had zero backlog, then you'd have your film in two to three weeks. Mm -hmm. But then when you're doing three weddings a weekend, the last, you know, wedding season, then it just accumulates. So, and I always just feel like it's if it may be four to six months might sound like a long, but you've got a little sneak peek. You've seen some photos and videos. It's nice for the couples just to chill, enjoy married life and, when it comes around and I'm always in communication with them as well. Like just mm. let them know where they, where their film's coming along and getting excited to get the edit going. I think it's nice to have that gap in between having your wedding and then making sure there's that time to just like mentally sink in what happened. Yeah. Like I don't know about you, but I've been on holidays taking video and then like, you know, I edit videos. So I like edit my own holiday video. And the only memory I have of that holiday is the damn video that I took of the holiday. And I'm like, I don't remember what actually <laughs> happened outside of the video. Mm. Like obviously this was a few years ago, but I literally cannot remember anything else. My only memory is those videos that I took. So for weddings, I, I think it's nice to, you know, I'm not advocating like, hey, definitely wait ages, but it is nice to have the buffer of nothing, mm -hmm. remembering your wedding yourself. Then you get your photos, reminiscing on those. And then when your video comes along, it's like, I don't know. I think it's nice to just sit back and go, wow, I didn't even realize these things were captured, yeah. which is something I always get like in an email afterwards, it's like I did not know that you got this or I did not realise that this happened. You're like, yep. Yeah, if couples yep. can get their films earlier and they're loving them, then that's awesome. But it takes a while to do what we do. Like it really does. And you don't want to rush it and spit a film out just for the sake of like having that number of like, I put out like, you know, I got your film back with you in three weeks. It's like, it's great. But in the long run, they're going to be watching that for 10, 15, 20 years. Their kids are going to watch that film. Yeah. You make, make that film as best you possibly can with yeah. what you've got. We could deliver in two weeks. Nope. Just, it won't be very good. <laughs> like it just, yeah. But I mean, the, the reason, again, why it does take longer is the process. There's a, yeah. a, a, a big process of it. So it is, yeah. if you think about how much we film on the day, which is, you know, usually 10, 12 hours mm -hmm. of a day. And the prior planning before that as well. Prior planning yeah. before that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then to then sift through all that footage. I mean, for Wade and myself, we also do the full ceremony edit, mm -hmm. full speeches edit. Then for the creative edits, you're looking through those again and again and again and trying to find like 
the moments that are right for that yeah. for that highlight film. So mm-hmm. yeah, trying to piece together, you know, in the speeches, maybe you know, the brother said this thing which matches what the father said, so we can put them together and yeah, you're kind of finding the structure of the story, like they talk about the same thing, sure, but what starts? Like how do we start the film? Is it gonna yeah. start on the dance floor? Is it gonna start yeah, there's a lot of creative decisions there that take a lot of time and there's a lot of different versions of a film that can be made. Like I mm-hmm. myself can do five different versions of a film before I'm like, this is the one. Like this, yeah. this just flows better. Yeah. And a lot gets cold and a lot gets put back in. And yeah, I don't know. The longer. It's really interesting. So what makes a video great? Jesus, a straight up question. All right. So for me, I think that the best films and like really for everybody, the best film is when the couple is having a great time. Yeah. So on the day, this is obviously for photo too, you'd know this. Yeah, yeah. But on the day is to just drop all those worries and just be in the moment. Like be there with your partner, have a good time, be there with your guests, just enjoy yourself. Yeah. Like there's nothing, like all my best films, I don't think location matters. I don't think what they're wearing matters. I don't think the cars, I don't think the flowers, like literally the best films I've done are the ones where the couple are just together having a really good time. That's like, that's, that's nice. the baseline yeah. best. Yeah. Everything else is a bonus and yeah. obviously it can definitely yeah. help. But, yeah, bare it's minimum. The goal. Yeah, I think that's like exactly what you just said. Like the more the couples give themselves and just break out of that what a wedding should look like, what it should be, how what things, all the traditional kind of things, they're the best weddings for sure because yeah. they're, they're more focused on what's more important to them. So when you sit down a couple and it's like ask them what's do you, how do you see your wedding day, like, you list the number one to ten things. Some couples are like, I just want to hang out with my fiance. You know, I want to get married. I want to hang out with friends and family. So you can kind of you can get what their wedding day is about. So the more that you can put in of the couple's personality, the more that they can open up and give back to you is probably the best wedding film you're going to create. If couples go in there thinking their wedding's going to look like a certain day, have a really short timeline, try and squeeze too much stuff in, yeah. they're the weddings that are going to struggle to create a film. You'll still be able to make a film, but it won't be the best wedding video um, because they'll be trying to squeeze too much in. So to make that happen, I think everyone has to be on board, to tell you yeah. the truth. Like the couple got to be open. The timeline's got to be like, you know, there's got to be room there yeah. for those little things to happen. Like if a couple like – you'd be the same. It's like couples will get back to you and say, there's sunset when we hung off, when we went off by ourselves and – got that photos with you was were some of the best moments of their day mm. so the couples that don't understand how crucial how important those little timelines are are the ones i feel like they miss out because they've been pushed into this world of like the venue coordinator or someone saying you need to be here at this time this needs to happen at that time and then we're going to follow with this you know where i think some couples should be like no nah, we want to spend 45 minutes at sunset yeah you know, having a champagne on a picnic rug by ourselves that's to me is when you get the best films and the best weddings because the couples are just breaking out of that normality of what a wedding should be and just being themselves. Being you mm. is the most important thing. Yeah. Like if you want to enter cars, then don't worry about getting a car. Yeah. Don't worry yeah. about it. Yeah. If you don't want a cake, don't get a cake. It's all right. Yeah. Get donuts. donuts. Yeah. Who doesn't get mind donuts? donuts? Is it Krispy Kremes? Perfect. How about a couple that Macca's cheeseburgers are wrapped yeah, up at 11 o'clock? I've seen McDonald's come out at 11 o'clock. Yeah. It's perfect. Who yeah. doesn't like – like so many guests would be like – where did this come from? Yeah. I've seen Mr. Whippy Van rock up for yes. dessert. Oh. And I think the, those things. You just drove in. That's what you would be the same, but that's what I'm looking for in the video. I'm All I'm looking for is the like Food? legitimate. <laughs> yeah. <is> those cheeseburgers. <laughs> <For> cheeseburgers. <laughs> no, I'm looking for the. Constantly the, scanning in the room for cheeseburgers. <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> that's it. I'm going. No. But the legitimate like things that are, represent them. Like I yeah. said, our films that we're trying to recreate the couple like yeah. what, what it is about them that makes their relationship and what makes their wedding day their wedding day if you're scrapping the things that aren't really you and making sure you're finding the time for you you and the things that are you then that's going to make your film so much better i don't have to worry about mm. getting some shots of cars because you don't care about cars and that's great so tell me about either a wild wedding story or an embarrassing story for yourself or it doesn't have to be for yourself but it might be for somebody at a wedding. Maybe a photographer had an embarrassing moment and you were there for it. This one time, Dana, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 she fell down that. in mud. <laughs> yeah. It's happened yeah, twice yeah, now, yeah. yes. I don't think I had anything embarrassing happen when we were at a wedding together. No. 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 Which is rare. 
Yeah. Well Doug's done. laughing because yeah, he's like, everything well, everything was embarrassing. No one saw it except me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, I, uh, I don't think I've had any embarrassing things, but you have to ask other people because mm. maybe I did something that was embarrassing. I had a wild wedding where it was one of my first, like when I started doing my own small business thing, it was a Riverland wedding um, and it was pretty, pretty crazy. And then we went off to do like a sunset shoot, guys and girls, whole bridal party, amazing shots. Um, and then the girls left and the guys were like, well, we're going to stay. Ross, stay with us. And I was like, yeah, cool. And then we got into the car and he just started doing donuts around like <laughs> this kind of empty paddock thing. And then when he finished his first donuts, he got out a um, bit of white powder and started sniffing <laughs> some stuff in this car. And then continued to do burnouts around this paddock where there was like trees and cre- like 100% I thought I was going to die. I was like in the car like, oh, my God. I, def- I filmed nothing. But, um, yeah, that was it. And then he literally Ace Ventura crash landed back at the wedding <laughs> and I got out of the car and did not return. <laughs> <laughs> and you That's lived to tell the tale. Story. I lived to tell the tale. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I won't probably throw anyone else under the bus except for myself. <laughs> um, I think my most embarrassing one was um, I was at a wedding. We had the dinner. I remember they had ginger beer, which was great because I never really had ginger beer and yeah. I had one. So I was setting up for the speeches and I started feeling a bit squish, squished in the stomach, felt a bit pale. So I I knew things weren't right. So I quickly set up the speech cams. They're unmanned, hit record, make sure they're all good. And then I just quickly just took myself outside and – <laughs> threw up all out the front of the venue just in the garden i was pretty like you know considerate of where i was going to throw up i didn't put it right in front of the steps very so nice it, of yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> or in front um, of the speeches all the yeah safety yeah. ramp just <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah and then as i was i guess I was, as i was throwing up as one end was doing its thing the other end decided i want in on the party and um <laughs> joined right in and next thing you know i was in a i was in a situation where i was like okay this is not a good situation to be in so None of us take extra undies to weddings. I'm not sure if anyone does, but I've learned my lesson. Ross yeah. does. No, I Perfect. Don't. I don't. So I had to, um, yeah, had to change in the car, go to the bathroom. Meanwhile, the speeches were still going on. I kind of heard the speeches about to like kind of change. So I did my thing, walked in there, set the cameras up, re- kept recording, and just throughout the night, just on the dance floor, um, undieless. <laughs> feeling like crap and that was it that was no one ever knew except for everyone now so that's great that's a great make sure this is at the very end yes. this is a yes. this is a very special but no bonus. that's probably my most embarrassing one i've um yeah I've, I've seen a lot of wild weddings and stuff as well things go on but to me they're just good weddings they're fun like you know um yeah nothing really embarrassing other than that i actually rocked up at the i went to the bride's prep this is last weekend and I knocked on her next door neighbor's house. And but I was very confident because yeah. hers was like she gave me the address, but her address was like six <laughs> A and I went to six. So yeah. I like knocked at the door. And this girl opened the door. And I don't know about you, but I like straight away it's like, hi, I'm Ross, like, and kind of walk your way in. <laughs> and I was just like, hi, I'm Ross. She's like, hello. And I was like, hi. Like and then it was just kind of this house. like weird, like she didn't want me to come in. I'm like, I mean, what are you, what's wrong? Like, let's get this, <laughs> let's get this started. Yeah. And I was just like, is there Did a wedding? Did you say that to her? <laughs> no, I just said like, is there a wedding, like wedding prep happening here? She's like, no. And I was like, okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> She's like, probably next door. I was like, yeah. Do you have a camera on you when yeah, you do that? Yeah, I had the camera in my hand, like, like everything. Let's get started. And she, like, I took a lady few steps. A strange man she, with a she camera. She didn't invite, house. but she opened the door. And then when I went to the bride's house, I was like, your neighbor is really lovely. Like she yes. opened the door for me yeah. and was very like, hello, how are you? And I was like, I'm great. Like really nice, but yeah, wrong house. But that's true though, because you, I suppose like, like thinking back on it now, there's been a couple of times where I've just like walked in. Yeah. Doug's like, yes, you have. Well, just sometimes in. it's. Well, I think it, I do the same. Yeah. yeah. It's not. If they look like a bridesmaid, it might or not a be somebody or... who knows who you are. Yeah, exactly. They just open yeah. the door. And so you're like, hi, yeah. Yeah, no, that's right. Sort myself and out, start looking to every room. Where's yeah. that light? <laughs> <laughs> there's always that awkwardness, though, because sometimes it can be like a bridesmaid bridesmaid or like yes. somebody like a part of the party that yeah. opens the door and it's not their house yeah. either so a it is partner a partner of a bridesmaid yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. yeah so i would love to know how you guys got into the industry i think 
my one so i did a lot of um like snowboard filming and stuff for a while so just making snowboard videos um traveling around i guess the point where i actually thought i wanted to make something like more emotional based more storytelling and it's pretty cool i might have been telling doug about it um was i made a film for my pop so my pop was kind of pretty much he was like the backbone of the family for a long time you know he was there he's like everyone to go to pop's house so pop remarried and he moved away um with his new wife she wasn't probably the nicest lady in the world but it just meant a lot of people couldn't see pop as much and it just kind of this it went on for about probably six or seven years until none of us were really seeing pop anymore anymore but everyone in the family wanted to tell him stuff or let him know how important he was to the family so i was like okay cool so i went around and interviewed like everyone in our family that had a huge impact or pop had a huge impact on so i got their little detail like little stories like what did he do like all these little like little traits that he had went through all the family photos all the films all the like old school stuff and just put this little 15 20 minute this is your life kind of video it was just kind of dedicated to him soundtracked it of course of like his favorite music so it was really cool so I was able to take the laptop out to Pop. So we drove out the six hours to go to see Pop. I sat him down, put the laptop, put noise-canceling headphones on him and just opened the lid and just, you need to watch this. And watching him watch that film was probably the most, like without a doubt, it's probably the best film I've ever done in my life. Probably the best film I'll ever do because it meant so much. And like watching him watch that, I was like, holy crap, this is something that I want to keep doing. And it was so good because when he finished watching it, he was like, can I watch that again? Yeah. But it made me realize not only could I like show like what he meant to us as a family member, it also let everyone in our family get off their chest what they wanted to say to him. So it was this really, really cool combination of like what film can do. And it was that point I was like, you know what, I want to do something that's not creating snowboard little videos and clips and stuff as well, which I still love doing, but it was more of a story driven thing. So then I moved down to Adelaide, met my now wife, Dee, tiptoed with a few weddings for someone else for a while like and they were just bigger greek italian weddings which is really cool you ever got to jump in the world of weddings just go right in the deep end and get yeah. thrown in the middle of a circle with smashing plates and yeah. uh, family traditions and stuff and then i just started branching off and then i i did a wedding and the and the couple were really open we were, we were chatting about themselves they just let themselves be themselves and it was at a winery and i was like this is what i want to do this is really cool so then i started moving productions about 2017 and it's been going strong ever since it's pretty much what it is now but yeah ross has probably got a cool story as well for no oh you make video home movies all the time he's like yeah, the have you ever seen ross's little videos oh my he gosh, does for his, his family? dog video yeah uh. yeah but like <laughs> any other dad out there when it comes around mother's day don't watch ross's feeds because he'll make us all feel like terrible <laughs> terrible dads what he, you didn't make a video like that for your wife not this year. <laughs> oh, bit of trouble. No, I've done You're videos not to make it next year so either because that's copyright. My, it's my yeah. backlog. It's building up. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ross makes incredible stuff for his family. Yeah. It's really, really cool. Yeah. I think it's really important for you guys to do that though as well, to like do work that you will really love um, for, for yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Like that person got you into videography like and to continue doing that for yourself. Yeah. I think that's what reminds – like when I do, I do these Mother's Day videos so every year for my wife, I put together like – the footage that I filmed throughout the year of my kids yeah. and it's kind of like a yearly summary and now it's become a bit of a tradition. But it's yeah. nice for me to do that because then yeah. it, it does remind me that what I'm creating for other people is that. Yeah. Like for what that – and this is like I don't film, you know, with my proper camera at home. This is yeah. just like my phone, half of it's, you know, iPhone. portrait. Yeah. yeah. So and, and that's still – and this is why I love like and why I shoot kind of raw and I don't stress too much about – the perfections because the imperfections for me are what make you you mm -hmm. and your family and yeah doing those videos really make me appreciate what i'm providing to somebody else like they're going to look back and be like wow that was our wedding day like mm -hmm. that was captured in this way and i don't know the reaction that they have from that is is yeah good so how did you jump how did you jump from doing that into wedding films i was studying film and tv and then i <laughs> my best mate's mum was getting married and she was like, can you like film our wedding day? I had never even been a guest to a wedding. Like I did not know how a wedding ran. Oh, wow. I had no idea. Yeah. I didn't know what a ceremony was or a, or a reception. Yeah. Like I always confused the two. I thought the reception <laughs> was like the first bit. And I was literally That's no true. idea. Yeah. Like no, I'd never been a guest. I'd never seen a wedding. 
Anyone, so was, if anyone's listening, can someone invite guest uh, Ross yeah. as a guest to a wedding? Yeah. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's putting it out there. Like, I still, I think, <laughs> as a guest and not working, I reckon I've still only been to like two. Yeah. But um, yeah, she asked me to film it, and I was like, really? Like, mm. I don't know how to do it. And she was like, yeah, I want you to do it. And I don't know. In hindsight, the film probably wasn't that great, but um, I loved it. I had a mm. good time, and then for years, I was just through word of mouth. People knew that I could do it, and then I'd do it for them, and. And then I shot for another company and then I kind of was just like, meh, like I'm done with this because it felt like kind of what we were saying. Like it was just back then like film the videos were kind of the same. Like it was you, you start at your groom prep, go to your bride and then it's like da, 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 hour long film or two hours long. No one wants to actually watch it unless you were there in the day. And then I saw like kind of what you were saying, like the eastern suburbs, uh, eastern suburbs, eastern states, like bottle brush films and all these guys that were doing these films that were catered towards kind of social media and really, you know, oomphing what a wedding is mm -hmm. and showcasing in, in a short way how a wedding was. And this was at the time where social media started to, like video obviously was picking up. So beforehand you'd see people would post their wedding photos and then you'd start to see people were posting their wedding video and you were like, holy crap, like this is crazy. And then I was like, I can, I can do that. Mm. Like I've been filming weddings for ages. So mm -hmm. why don't I do this? And then, yeah, got in it from... Literally never, ever being to a wedding to filming weddings every weekend. Mm. Well, thank you both so much for coming here today and, and being on the podcast. We've really appreciated it. Thank you for having us. Me. It has been a delight. <laughs> it's all these you're, years. Nah, you're welcome. So, so is Olive over here. So if you'd like to find Ross Guerin Videography, you can find him on Facebook and Instagram. He is Ross Guerin Videography. And then if you would like to head to his website, he's rossguerin.com. Very simple. It's true. Straight to the point. I love it. It's me. <laughs> if you would like to find Wade on socials, he is movement underscore productions on Instagram and movement productions on Facebook. And then you can head to his website, which is www.movementproductions.com.au. If you're loving listening to the podcast, we would love it if you would give us a review. You can do that on Apple or Spotify. Thank you for listening to The Wedding Edit, a wedding planning podcast for the modern couple. We'll see you for another episode in two weeks. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, and that was awesome. But poor Doug, we just ran. so I know. So we, I, know. I was thinking that. I was like, we man. We'll sit back in this line. Man. Too long is his answer. Two hours.